come and hear the truth from the horse's own mouth. ...to that. He is interested in the health of the people of his state, and because he is, he's taken a close look at what's in the COVID vax, the one that everyone in the country was required to take not so long ago. And he's come up short. He can't answer some basic questions about it. And that's a concern if we're doing science, which he is. And so he has now called on doctors to immediately stop giving the mRNA COVID vax to their patients. And for a very interesting reason that you should know about, here's his statement, and we're quoting. I'm calling for a halt to the use of mRNA COVID-19 vaccines. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have always played it fast and loose with COVID-19 vaccine safety, but their failure to test for DNA integration with the human genome, as their own guidelines dictate, when the vaccines are known to be contaminated with foreign DNA is intolerable. Think about that. It's one thing if it gives you a heart attack, if it tampers with your DNA in some way, now we have a real problem, considering a billion people got it. So in a recent interview about the MRA vaccines, the Surgeon General of Florida described them this way. These vaccines have DNA in them. Everyone knows what DNA is. They're contaminated with DNA, and that's not necessarily a big deal. But it's a problem with these vaccines because the DNA hangs on with the mRNA and goes into people's cells. So this is a completely different risk analysis than other products that have had DNA. These vaccines are honestly, they're, they're the antichrist of all products. The antichrist of all products. The Surgeon General of Florida joins us now to explain what he means. Doctor, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I remember at the beginning of the vax mandates, there were people on the fringes, as we say, who raised questions about the the potential of this drug, this brand new, this novel vaccine, uh, which wasn't really a vaccine, to affect people's DNA. And they were immediately described as crazy. Tell us your concerns, if you wouldn't mind fleshing out a little bit what we saw in that clip. You know, it's, it's so interesting to hear you say that, Tucker, because I had the same impression when people very early on were citing concerns about DNA, I think that really what was happening is that their intuition was informing them about a potential problem with these vaccines. And you know, you showed that clip there. This one is is sometimes I honestly I feel quite guilty dragging people through the scientific details, but I try and do it at a level that hopefully won't bore people to death or be too painful because it is a very important issue and it's not a complicated issue, and it's important for people to recognize the difference between the honest facts, which is what I'm sharing, and the spin and dodge and look over here that you hear Dr. Califf at the FDA and other, you know, Dr. Offit, other people sharing. So it's actually very simple. We all know what DNA is. You know, it, this is this is our genetic blueprint, our gift from God, and. This DNA can be affected, and that can be obviously a very bad thing. Sometimes it's affected in a way that makes people sick. Sometimes it can even be affected in a way that leads people to pass on characteristics to their, to their offspring. In this particular case with the mRNA vaccines, they have DNA in them like, you know, like many other vaccines or other biologic type of medications. And that, as I've said previously, is not such a big deal because fortunately, DNA is not some big hairy monster that can you know, live forever when it's foreign in people's bodies. Our bodies have lots of mechanisms to break them down. But the problem here is that you know, the, for the same reason that scientists want a Nobel Prize, this DNA isn't like other DNA in terms of having a very hard time penetrating into cells. This DNA hangs on with mRNA in that lipid nanoparticle that people hear and frankly probably roll their eyes out, their eyes over, it hangs on with it and it comes into the cells almost certainly hitchhiking along with the mRNA. So whereas in the past, DNA would have a very hard time even entering cells, here the DNA is getting delivered into cells with the lipid nanoparticles. 
And that's a problem. And that's a problem because each dose of mRNA COVID-19 vaccine probably contains, it's been estimated between billions and hundreds of billions of fragments of DNA. So this is a completely different risk analysis. That is obvious. You don't need a PhD to be able to figure that out. And the FDA's own guidance about contaminating DNA, published guidance, their words, never referred to by them, by the way, in their counter arguments, but their words are that there are situations when you need to confirm that DNA that is a contaminant or foreign DNA is not integrating into human DNA, into the human genome. And there are specific tests, sequencing tests to do this, to make sure it's done. And what we did is we asked the FDA, well, have you done this? You've acknowledged this risk, have you done this? And they came back with about 10,000 words talking about everything from what time the sun sets in China to you know their their third cousin's uh, you know bar mitzvah, and nothing about the specific question we asked, along with other questions, by the way, but nothing about that, which leads me to conclude they haven't done it. Which is, I mean, they, you know, it it starts at crazy, but it ends at somewhere else. That someone could be just so, just so nonchalant and frankly willy nilly with something as precious and as you know as sacred as our human DNA. So that's a, that's a summary, Tucker. Do, do you think it's conceivably possible that the mRNA vaccines change people's DNA or could? It's absolutely possible. I mean, we wouldn't, I wouldn't have issued this, this call to halt their use if that was, wasn't possible. On a factual basis, it is absolutely possible. There's, there's zero question about that. Now, the real question is whether it is happening, if it is happening, the degree to which it's happening, the location of affected cells, and the potential for that to cause, whether it's cancer or heritable characteristics, or that is to say that is it affecting things like people's, a woman's eggs or a man's sperm, such that it could be passed on, or whatever else it potentially could be causing. But it absolutely is a possibility. There's zero question about that. The well, real question is whether it's a possibility worth investigating. The obvious answer is yes, even though the FDA and Dr. Paul Marx, Peter Marx, pardon me, wants you to believe that the answer is no. Well, that would change humanity if that were happening forever. And frankly, just considering the the frankly the evil frequency from the beginning of this pandemic, the you know the lockdowns, the forcing people to stay at home, the not having people, allowing people to say bye-bye to people they love, just all the horrific things, the firing of people who you know, stuck it out during the pandemic but then passed on the, on the vaccine after, after the vaccines were available, all the evil that has defined the frequency of policies during this pandemic, sadly, I mean, I hate that that is, is a possibility, but sadly, I would not be at all surprised. In fact, I think it's probably likely that that is in fact happening. You think it's likely happening that humanity itself is being changed forever by this round of mRNA vaccines? Yes, I do, I do. And that's based on you know, just the things that I just said and the fact that it is possible. So again, the question is, is it actually happening? And frankly, my instinctive feeling is that totally it's happening. The extent to which it's happening, the degree to which it's happening, you know, any particular lots for which it's worse or or sort of less prominent, I mean, those are questions that should be characterized. But if I had to place a bet on what the likely answer to that question is, yeah, I do think that it's probably happening. I think it would be right in step and in sync with every terrible, horrible thing that we've seen happen during the pandemic as a result of people abandoning common sense, abandoning reason, abandoning humanity in pursuit of whatever their ideological or profit-fueled or greed-based or greed-fueled desire is. Yeah, I think it would be quite consistent with that. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked, but I guess I'm not that shocked. So let me say right. something I've never said to anybody, but I've just noticed, and it always has felt a little crackpot to me, so I've never expressed it. Do you think it's possible that 
after getting the mRNA shot that people's personalities might change in ways that you would notice. We're going to enter a spiritual domain, <laughs> domain here, Tucker. So I am, you know, uh, as you know, I went to medical school at Harvard. I got a PhD while I was in medical school. I had multiple NIH grants, did research full time along with taking care of patients before entering this position as, as Surgeon General of Florida, thanks to Governor DeSantis. And I've got to tell you that, you know, during the pandemic, you'd sometimes hear people say that this is a spiritual war. And it's, it's a funny thing for people to say, but instinctively and intuitively, I remember the first time I heard it, I heard it uh, sort of yelled out in the middle of a, of a press conference with Governor DeSantis out here in, um, I think, uh, Bradenton, Florida. I responded immediately that yes to the, to the person in the audience who said yes, it is a spiritual war. And it absolutely is. And this has to do with intuition. Again, I've left the MD, PhD hat and I'm talking just as a human being and someone who, you know, like many of us, guide their lives based on how they feel, what they feel about what truth is and what resonates. And I got to tell you that truly, you know, I, I think in terms of the toll, we've heard different estimates for their potential contribution to excess mortality. I think that that probably is the case that they contribute. And I think that that is just a part of what is frankly bad and um, an evil behind the intention of these mRNA COVID-19 vaccines and the whole entire uh, pandemic policy approach. And so I got to tell you that I do believe that that it, it totally it can change things that you would not expect to change uh, from people just taking a typical vaccine like the flu vaccine. So not, not just their physical health, but also their mental state. I mean, well, I guess why wouldn't it and, get? Right, yeah. And I actually wouldn't say so much mental. Um, and again, again, we are, you know, this is Joe, the, you know, the dad and the, you know, the husband and the man speaking with you here. But yeah, yeah, there's a, you know, there's a, there's unfortunately a, a, there's absolutely an evil underlying frequency to these products. And, you know, it's, it's something that I felt early, but just over time and frankly, over, with my own spiritual development and spiritual growth and power um, in terms of my connection to, you know, my connection to God and, and, um, and other people and just to, to, you know, the, the gifts that God gives each of us and with each of us having a different degrees of access to those gifts because of our journeys in life. Um, yeah, th these, these mRNA COVID-19 vaccines, and I'm ta talking about the technology in general, I'm not talking about other technologies. I'm talking about these particular products. You know, I, unfortunately, yes, early on, no doubt, were they effective at reducing illness from COVID-19? Yeah, the data were very strong. Now it's completely unclear. There's data that actually points the opposite direction in terms of negative effectiveness and lots of other problems. But despite what they may have provided in terms of benefits specifically targeted toward COVID-19 illness or, or death, they have caused uh, much worse in terms of not only adverse events, but also again, at a spiritual level, there's just there's there's something that is that's, that is that I um, intuitively am certain is uh, is wrong with these with these per, this particular technology and these particular products. I, I well, of course, I couldn't agree more. Um, but back just briefly to the public policy questions around this. So, um, one, didn't the U.S. government, the Biden administration, the Trump administration before them? have an obligation to tell the population, to tell the world, this product that we're gonna force you to take could change your DNA, or that foreign DNA is gonna enter your cells. I mean, because I, I think we know that to be true, and I don't believe Absolutely. that anyone knew that in the public. Why wouldn't they tell us that? Yeah, so you're right, pardon me, and you know, it, it goes back to the Trump administration and, you know, Dr. Fauci and other people who were involved in um, in Operation Warp Speed. And 
it goes it goes all the way back there. And you know, again, Tucker, I think what what helps make this make sense, um, a sad sense, is that you know you look back at the forces. I mean, incredibly powerful forces that were exerted and projected on the earth and you know in the populations on this earth at the at the start of this pandemic incredibly powerful forces in terms of their imposition of a of a view about how to approach the pandemic that consumed everything and part of what it consumed was common sense part of it part of what it consumed was prudence part of what it consumed was good judgment you know, part of what it consumed was human centeredness. Part yes. of what it consumed was heart centeredness. And so when you have all of those things happening, then stuff that's obvious, like, you know, there's DNA and oh, now it's with lipid nanoparticles. So it's not like other vaccines. This is DNA that is almost certainly going to make it into your cells. Billions of fragments of it with each dose. And this is not even mentioning the SV40. Pro, an enhancer promoter DNA that was part of Pfizer's that is a specially bad type of DNA in terms of entering people's cells. I mean, those are obvious questions, but with all those forces that were exerted and unfortunately no force that was loud enough and strong enough to counterbalance it, there were people that you know of, I mean, I was one of them too, who early on were saying, this doesn't make sense, slow it down, slow your roll let's you know let's think about things let's be sensible let's be human centered you know those voices were no match at that time for the forces that were being exerted and pressed onto the consciousness of the population and and so basic important things never got asked you know like what do you do when you close the lockdown what does it mean when you stop people when you stop kids from being able to play outside what does it mean when you stop young people from being able to pursue their dreams and their education and whatever other pursuits they have in mind? Those things were squeezed out because of the forces that were in place. Really one of the most shocking conversations I've ever had in my life. Uh, the Surgeon General of Florida, Dr. Joseph Ladapo, thank you very much for joining us.